Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are back again today with this Kurum White team that we kicked off with at the start of the week. I did say in yesterday's episode that we might just stick with the team and give it two more games before we look at any changes. We had the Nihiligo show yesterday, and it was so refreshing to see it doing so well. So if you missed that episode and you want to check it out before you check today's out, go back up here, I'll link a card to that one for you. You can check that out. But keep the suggestions coming guys, tomorrow is probably going to be the day that we do start introducing some changes before we just finalise everything for Friday. And like I say, even if we get to Friday because we've had such a close amount of games to test and make changes in over this two week period that we might need a little more time. We're trying to condense doing this process into like 10 games when you really want to really open that up to about... 30 to 40 to 50 games to really give the team a good run out and we're just condensing it down I'm just trying to give you examples of how to do this over these two weeks with something more of a fun build than anything else But I feel confident that by tomorrow we'll have a really cohesive team That's good that you can pick up and take competitions and things like that and do pretty well with it So without further ado, let's get into today's episode as always, if you enjoy the content, please remember to leave a like on the video. It's massively helpful. It let me know that you're enjoying the content as well. Make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily episodes and all of our guide series, our review episodes that we do, all other VGC content and everything else outside of that on the channel. And uh, we'll get into it. So hopefully it's going to be a good one. And hopefully you do not hear the sound of Tash. She's making a juice right now so I can just hear my Nutribullet going crazy so hopefully it's not bleeding over into the microphone but never mind can't blame her for being healthy or trying to be <laughs> it's so loud though it's like so loud if you can't hear it all I can hear is that <laughs> it's crazy loud I guess we'll go with trainer version more music today as well and we've got our first opponent of the day just like magic and we've got a team of Xerneas, Lucario, Mewtwo, Cartana. Do I need to continue? This team's great already. Tapu Lele and Amunga. So we've got some real great picks here. Mewtwo, one of my favorite restricted Pokemon. Really nice to see that. It's going to be a bit of a pain to deal with. But we've got good methods to get around it. Lucario as well, an interesting pick here. It has access to things like Follow Me. Has access to the Z-Move now. So it could be Phytinium. It could be the Steelium Z. Uh, we've got to be really careful for that because we can't really just expected to do something it's got such a diverse move pool then you got Cortana you got Tapu Lele for the priority support and pairs up so nicely with that Mewtwo as well and then Amoongus is going to be again like most teams you see is a trick room kind of deterrent in case trick room goes up because against these selected Pokemon that we've already outlined they do struggle slightly if Tailwind is up so I think I think I think we'll lead off with Incineroar because the Intimidate's going to be good for the Cortana and Lucario, particularly. It really does help us against Mewtwo and Lele with Snarl um, and the Amoongus. Um, I think, what else will we lead off with? Hmm. Sogaleo is quite nice. I think Tapu Fini is nice as well. And what else do I think is nice? Could I could go Curum, which I kind of tempted to go with. There's two fairies there, though. Or Nihiligo. Oh, let's go Curum. Why not? And get into this one today. I like, I'm like, team preview. Because I like this Pokemon. I like it. So I'm going to bring it. <laughs> it makes no competitive sense. But I do think it's good. Kyurem can do a good job. Like, it's got the Fusion Flare. It's going to be able to take attacks from the Cortana. We've got to protect it well. It can do good work against the Amoongus. We've got the Z-Move for it there. We've got the Z-Move for, like, all sorts of other things on the team. Like Lucario as well. And uh, even Mewtwo. Which we will be able to take attacks from. Um, we're going to see... Lucario and Xerneas come out for my opponent. We've got to remember that the Lucario has inner focus, so there's no point of faking that target out because grr, we're not going to be getting much traction there from that, um, which is a little bit annoying. Um, we can fake out the Xerneas, though, for sure, but it's likely it's going to protect. And pff, we've not really got too much to hit the Lucario with. I mean, we could superpower it, but at the same time... It's not really going to be doing us much good because it doesn't put us in a great position going into yeah, turn two if we're minus one defense and attack. Since your strike might be better just to get damage onto it. Um, I'm going to fake out the Xerneas and I'm going to sense your strike the Xerneas as well. It kind of leaves the Lucario open just if the Xerneas protects, but it's risky. Hopefully it follows me though. 
might do. It might not though, as well. We're gonna see. Okay, there's the follow me. So we get the fake out into the zones. We're gonna deny that geomancy turn one at least, uh, and we'll get some decent damage onto this Lucario now. Um, probably put it in range for a super power going into the following turn. Um, yeah, I think. But we've got a super power that slot. We can't go for the Sun Seal Strike again. Um, we could Snarl. We've got a Warrior as well. Like, the Lucario could have Justified. That's another ability that it gets. Now, Justified would not be good because we'll be boosting its attack, but it will be doing it at the end of the turn. And imagine we'll see a, a Geomancy here. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna, I am gonna go for the Snarl and I'm gonna go for a Super Power. Try and get rid of this support network that my opponent's kind of relying on here with this Follow Me Lucario. And the Snarl's gonna be super good for us just to reduce the damage of that Geomancy. So, here we go. There's the Super Pirate into the Lucario. Get rid of that, which is nice. And there's the Geomancy. It's so funny, like, it, it, it's so funny. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but if I'm a Xerneas player in front of a Sogaleo, I kind of don't want a Geomancy, but there's so many players out there, and you've got to give them props. Like, they're so ballsy to just do it. They're like, Puh! And care about that steel lion? It's doing nothing. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's not KOing me. And just go for it. And I'm like, oh man. It, but it works because it puts so much pressure on you going into this next turn. Now they've got an opportunity to bring in something next to it, really support it very well. So it's not going to be easy in the slightest. But at the same time, uh, we are going to see good old Mewtwo hit the field now. It's pro. <laughs> I totally expected to have the Phytinium Z. The fight in UMZ is what I expected to have. <sighs> and get rid of Incineroar. I don't want to see it. Uh, okay, we'll go for that. Um, the Snarl. We have super powers, so it's probably a decent time to try. Uh, I need to reset. I'm going to bring in Tapu Fini here. This could all go wrong for us. All go wrong. But we'll see, we'll see. We could have switched to Finny into Incineroar, but I need to reset the attack drop and stuff that we've had on Silver Lair so far. So we've seen the Dazzling Gleam come out, Aurora Sphere. It's gonna be more than enough to take down Incineroar. Poor Incineroar. And we survive, we survive. Come on, Inci, you beast. <laughs> so good, you are so good. I'll get the Snarl off, please don't miss. Okay, excellent, All right, hype. Hype Central, right here. So, getting that special attack drop onto the Mewtwo in particular is really important. I mean, it's very good for the Xerneas as well, but at the same time, just being able to kind of cover that is very nice. I'm going to U-turn now onto the Mewtwo, and I'm going to set up a light screen. That's going to be so important for us going into the rest of this game, because I think, I would think, probably the Tabulele is in the back. Um, and once that comes in, if they are special attackers, and this will really help us out a lot to close out this game. We're going to see another Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam and probably Aurora Sphere is enough now. Especially with that critical hit. Concern it. Um, onto Incy. But we'll be able to get a light screen up. Side Strike coming out into... Oh, it's going to be Tapu Fini. Should take this though. Yeah, quite comfortably. Um, and the light screen. Which is so helpful for us going into this next turn. Like I say, I think if... My guess is right, it's going to be Tapu Lele in the back. Well, it might not be. Um, but now we've got this, uh, an option to bring in this Sogaleo and just start absolutely wrecking, wrecking stuff. And we've still got the Incineroar to bring in as well, if we want later on in the match. Got to be a little bit careful about this Mewtwo. Could have Flamethrower. Could have all the techs. Um, but I'm just going to go Sunseal Strike into the Mewtwo here. And I'm going to go... Uh, Nature's Madness into Xerneas. I could Icy Wind, but I think just putting it in range. Okay, we're not going to see any Protect. We're going to see Psy Shock come out from the Xerneas. <laughs> Madman and Psy Strike. Psy Shock, Psy Strike. Psy Strike's animation is so good, isn't it? Oh, Tapu Fini is a beast. It is just a beast. All over a beast. Look at that. 4 HP survival. 
and the Sunsteel Strike will be enough to get the Mewtwo and we'll be able to put that Xerneas into range now from a Sunsteel Strike from a Sogaleo. I feel like the team is so much more balanced right now though than it was last week and I feel like we've got so many more options to kind of just chip away at teams, get ourselves into good board positions with the team overall. So I don't know, it seems more cohesive than it did last week, even though there were some elements of the team last week that were that were extremely good. Um, we've got the Amoongus coming in now, we'll send Steel Strike the Xerneas and we will go for a Icy Wind, but I feel all but this match is over now. So once we get Kurem in, it should be over and we just see my opponent forfeit, so very good game to my opponent and a nice win for us to kick off with today. So hopefully we can continue this going into our next match. And like I say, as well as the team probably does today, we'll probably still make changes going into tomorrow's episode because like I, like I always try and mention to you guys, it's always good to test things out and you can always go back to how a team was before you made any changes. If you think that change doesn't work it doesn't really matter too much but i think it's good for what we're doing this week to make some changes going into tomorrow's episode and then we can reevaluate everything on friday take all the information that we've had from all of the games that we've had up to that point and really make a good concise decision on what we're going to end up with going into friday's episode and like i say sometimes it's not always going to be the finished article because we haven't had that long period testing with it but we can always do our best in what you know, time frame we've had to do it in. But we've got our next opponent, so let's hop into Team Preview. Got our next opponent playing a team of Tapu Fini, Kyogre, Xerneas, Incineroar, Ferrothorn, and Smeagol. So this is going to be a real good test for the team here. I think this restricted combination of Xerneas, Kyogre has given us a lot of issues in the past. So it's really going to kind of test our metal to see if we're going to be able to deal with this well going into this one. Um, right, what do we want? Finny is going to be so important for us here. We need to protect it against... A lot of things though, but if we can get an early light screen up, it's going to be really useful for us. It kind of helps against that Smeagol as well, going for those uh, lovely kisses and things like that. I'm kind of tempted to lead off with Serena as well. Mm, let's think. Um, I do want Sogaleo, because it does so much work against Incineroar, Xerneas, Ferrothorn, Smeagol. Just the Kyogre doesn't really like too much. Um, do we want our own fake out here um, in, in cinema or do we want Curum White? Like Curum White isn't really doing too much other than <sighs> hitting the Ferrothorn for good damage. And I feel like Incineroar is probably better for us here. So let's bring Incineroar as our last one. We kind of want to just keep it not on the field as long as our Kyogre is out. So. And this is the thing, like, when you look, and we've had suggestions about Curum Black being a better option in this sort of build, and I think Curum Black, because of that electric stab that it gets, well, electric option that it gets as an attack, gives it so much more versatility against, like, the current format than Curum White, because I feel like Curum White just struggles so much against these... Um, Kyogre teams, if I can get my words out, I'm sorry. So we're going to see Xerneas and Smeagol lead for my opponent. We'll lead off with Tapu Fini and Serena. So we're blocking any sort of fake out support here. Um, and we can definitely get a light screen up with Tapu Lele. And I think a power whip is going to be quite nice onto the Xerneas right now. Spiky Shield. Are we going to see his, uh, a Geomancy from the Xerneas? Moonblast, straight up Moonblast, not wanting to go for that Geomancy, I do not mind this at all. And we'll be able to take that, like, fairly comfortably with our Serena. Uh, we get the light screen up, which is going to be the most important thing for us right here. And a power whip to get some damage off onto this Xerneas, put it in range potentially for... Um, a Sunseal Strike from the Sogaleo when it comes onto the field, which I really want to try and do as soon as possible. I'm going to go for an Icy Wind now. And I am going to switch out into Sogaleo here with Serena. Keep that for later on if I can. Um, with the light screen up, it does make it a little bit easier for us to deal with that Xerneas if it goes for the Geomancy here. And we've still got the Follow Me to worry about with this Meagol, which it's going to go for now. And we'll probably see the Geomancy come out from the Xerneas. We've just gone for a Dazzling Gleam. It's not opting to go for the Geomancy just yet. 
He's holding off there. Ugh, Smeagol avoids, which is the one thing we really wanted to hit in this situation. Um, makes it a bit awkward, because breaking that sash is kind of really important for us. But the Smeagol's not really offering too much other than that follow me support right now. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll just go for another Icy Wind and a Sunsteel Strike into that Xerneas. Hmm. The Xerneas switching out makes a lot of sense. And Cinderol coming in. Yeah, okay. I don't think we'll see a follow me here. Probably a spiky shield from the Smeagol. Yeah. Now one of the things we could do, depending on the damage output here from the Sunstill Strike into the Incineroar, is switch Serena in. And me, uh, like, get around the fake out support, and potentially we'll be able to pick up a knockout with the superpower onto Incineroar this next turn, avoid any fake out damage as well. Um, and it means that we've got Tapu Fini in the back for when. the terrain ends as well especially if we've not removed the smeagol from the field yet and it just i just think preserves it a little bit more hmm so we could bring in cinema in right now which is another decent option for us um no i'm gonna bring in serena i'm gonna bring in serena and i'm gonna go for the superpower into nc I don't know if we see a follow me from this Migo, maybe. No? See it switch out. I'm gonna see Kyle get hit the field. It's just whether or not the superpower is enough to get the incineral. Gotta hope that it probably is. Yep, okay, we get that. Now I'd imagine Smeagol to come back in. got to worry about <clears throat> the water spout from a potential Scarf Kyogre as well at the same time. There's a Smeagol coming back onto the field and our Misty Terrain does run out this next turn. I mean one thing we could do here is go Power Whip into the Kyogre and Wide Guard. It's just whether we see a Follow Me right now. And the Waterium Z could be a bit of an issue for us. Because if Sogaleo is if we lose Sogaleo, it makes life a lot more difficult for us to um to deal with the Xerneas. But we'll see. There's a water spot. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I think the nice thing here is if as long as our power whip hits, we put the Smeagol in range for us to take it down this next turn with a feint. Uh, and Misty Terrain actually fades here. Light Screen fades here. So it's perfect timing really for us to bring in Tapu Fini for Sogaleo. Get the terrain back up. Um, can soak up a Water Spout. But it's not likely the Kyogre goes for a Water Spout here, I don't feel. Um, we'll go for that faint into the Smeagol. Um, and we'll bring in Tapu Fini. And it just gives us a chance as well to reset the attack and defense drops that we've had from the Sogaleo from the Incineroar turn earlier on. So here's the Fini. There's a follow me. Yep. Like I say, I don't think the Kyogre goes for Water Spout. Unless it is Scarfed, then it is locked into Water Spout. And if it is, then it's locked into it for the entire game. So it means when we get the. Yeah. Togaleo back in, we can just wide guard. Oof, there's so much damage. It's crazy, crazy. It's just like, it never surprises me how much damage this thing does. And we'll get Togaleo back in. And if we can get a light screen up, that's pretty nice for us. Like, we can wide guard, light screen. Um, It's 
still going to be a little bit tricky because the Xerneas could potentially take down the Tapu Fini here. But I am going to wide guard again. Light screen. Just if we see a Geomancy. Although I think you probably want to just remove the Tapu Fini when you've got the chance to. Rather than let it sit on the field and start supporting the Sogaleo. There's a Moonblast, yeah, it's going to be into the Finny. But the Kyogre's not actually Scarfed. I wonder if it's Specs then. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Could be Specs. It make a lot of sense though for what the, the, the team composition. The like with specs, you'd expect it to have a lot more speed control support around it, which this team really doesn't have. Um, we we'll use this this turn to Sunsteel Strike the Xerneas, and we'll try and get a fake out into the Kyogre. I mean, we still got Snarl as well, which is a nice option. Xerneas is protecting. Makes a lot of sense here. I think if the Kyogre doesn't protect, yeah, it kind of indicates that it is Specs. And with the damage output that it did to Serena, it kind of indicates that that's probably what it what it is doing. Uh, the Rain does stop, which does help us out a, a huge amount going into these next turns. Um, I'm going to Wide Guard again, and I will just Snarl. Because the big thing here is just making sure that the Kyogre cannot do anything to Sogaleo. It's the only thing that really can take us out at this point in time if it pulls out a random scald now though I'm going to be like so surprised there's a move last to incinerar and there's a water spout yeah so it's likely specs 100% now you can pretty much bank on that there's a snarl And we can just wide guard, to be honest. And like a flare blitz probably is enough to take down the Xerneas, I would imagine now. So we'll just wide guard again. And we can just stall out Kyogre's water spouts. It's only got a maximum of eight. It's used a bunch of those already, so it's gonna be a matter of time before it runs out of them and starts struggling. Ooh, there's the Geomancy coming out. Last ditch attempt. I think you might have wanted to go for that a lot earlier in this game. Uh, like at least two turns ago. But I mean, it's worth going for right now. You're still going to be plus one. It's whether or not the Flare Blitz can pick up the knockout here. That Kyogre just locked into the water spouts, just going for those continuously. Um, flare Blitz. Will it be enough, though? Will it be enough? Should be. <sighs> it's not quite enough. Hmm. White guard and um, yeah, we'll go for the flare blitz again into Xerneas. I don't think Incineroar takes a plus one moon blast from this range, which is what I would do if I was the opposing Xerneas. And there's no way it locks into Dazzling Gleam. But it's all about now just getting this Kyogre to struggle once it starts struggling. Yeah, Pinsy gone. Water spout. We've still got our citrus berry to Sogaleo. It's only plus one Xerneas, so I think we should be alright stalling this out. It's just getting to that point with the Kyogre. Hopefully, it's not too long before it can. We maybe should have just protected here. Okay, Xerneas protecting. Watch the Kyogre whip out something other than water spout now. Unless this is the term of the Kyogre's... Yeah, okay. Can we work out if it's got... So how many wide guards have we used? Oh, I think it's got two more. I think it's got two more water spouts. <sighs> hmm. I just wide guard again. Then we could protect the next turn. And hope that that is the last... Moonblast, let's see what this damage is like. 
plus one. Okay. What is about? Now it should have one more. Now I'll protect. Now the mechanics should allow me to protect here. No! Oh, we've got it wrong. We've got it totally wrong. We screwed ourselves. I think we lose this game now. <laughs> I can't believe we've actually done this. Unless water spout has run out. Let's say use one water spout before we got toggle in. But yeah, okay. We actually... This has saved our bacon a little bit. Because now we can protect. To protect on the Xerneas. Oh my god. Can't believe we just did that. It's the most ridiculous thing we've ever done. There's the Xerneas protect here. Could we lose to like struggles though? That's the problem. Because the Moonblast is still going to take a good chunk of damage from us. Well, will sense you'll strike the Xerneas now. Fool, fool. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to actually... Like, how much does this do? Okay. Probably going to be able to actually win this by the skin of our teeth. We don't really deserve to after that mistake that we made. I'm just trying to think back of when I used to use Aegis Lash or Wide Guard and then Shadow Shield, but you've got to, you, you can't use it in conjunction like that anymore. So... I think we lock into superpower here because superpower is going to do a bit more damage than Kyogre. It's going to struggle. This we should just take this as long as it's not a crit. There we go. Yeah, and then the superpower will be enough to take it down, and that is the game today. But at least we beat the Kyogre Zenius. I think without that silly mistake, we win that match, and that's really good because that's a, a call that we have been struggling against. So the team is performing a lot better. Especially the last couple of days. I'd say the last like five matches that we've played, it's been doing really well. So really positive for us going forward. Um, but like I say, we might change things up tomorrow just to test out before we come back to everything on Friday. But let me know your opinions beforehand. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you would like to see played before we make that final valuation of the team on Friday. But uh, I will just say thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Hope to see you on the next episode and uh, just, yeah, take care. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.